Great is he who is faithful to us forevermore. Faithful, whatever we do, he's faithful. Whether we backtrack or not listen, he's still faithful. And that is why we come to God, is because we're not worthy to come to him, we're not deserving to come to him, but because of his faithfulness in our lives, we are able to just come and surrender ourselves this morning to him. Amen. Welcome everyone to this hour uh, act of worship this morning. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. When we come to God this morning, we're not coming for ourselves. But we come in to say, God, you have been faithful, you have been good. And that is why we are here. Just because of that. So, if you are a visitor, and it's your first time to this beautiful family of Christ Church and people, you are welcome. We are people full of love, full of joy in the Lord. And if you are new, please raise your hand. If you are a visitor, you can raise your hand. If you're not a visitor, oh, well, let's just say, I always say, if you're not a visitor, the saints and the angels are visiting us this morning anyway, so hallelujah to that. <laughs> um, if you're celebrating a birthday, anybody celebrating a birthday this morning? You're celebrating a birthday this morning? No one. Oh, that's quite strange. There's always a celebration when it comes to birthdays. Any anniversaries this morning? Anyone celebrating anniversary? Okay, no one. So, I just want to give uh, praise and shout out to the Lord because it has been a busy week, but God has really journeyed with us. On Friday, we had our first praise and worship night, and the Lord just met us where we were. He visited us and it was a wonderful time together, you know, as a church, you know. It's a start and we are just grateful to God. And yesterday I spent time with the young people, the servers, and they were filling up this place and worshipping the Lord. It was so wonderful to see children being free of the Lord. And how do they look like when they're freed in Christ? It was their first ever um, conference and service. And the turnout was wonderful. There were about 75 kids in this cathedral. Can you imagine? 75 children in this cathedral. And I'm saying to you, a seed has been planted and God is going to water it. Our church is growing. Hallelujah. And then we also want to welcome back Maru uh, Divendari. He was on leave. He's here with us. It's nice to have the sanctuary full. And Because he and, and, and Maruti Bruce went for the synod and the Mahara as well, but it's nice to have him back because I was alone now in the monastery, but now century is full. So, um, in our prayers, also may we uh, lift to God um, these families um, Chris and Shirley Ferguson, Lydia Maleti, Douglas Makapoto. Hoppa, Mama Dementia, Rosaline, Philip Pache, Mama Bora, Helen Swindon, Heather Lingen, Lucy Sofa, Gone Makola, Bumi Zwani, the Kikane, Mahoto, and Nong families. Let us pray. Father, we come before your grace this morning. We come our Lord that you will fit us. You will fit us to overflowing. We know that sometimes. Our cups run low. But when we come to you in this morning, we come to receive strength. Not only your strength, but we are coming to be strengthened through the Holy Eucharist. So be with us, Lord, as we worship and praise you. Be with each and every one of us, so that whatever it is that we do this morning can be really, really acceptable unto your sight. So we command the service to you. May your Holy Spirit be with us, and may you be pleased. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us 
say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and be to see the Lord of death, Lord of God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you are alone at the Holy One, you are alone at the Lord, you are alone at the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Psalm this morning is Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Uh, 
that will hinder us to hear your message this morning. Remove it in the name of Jesus. Allow our minds to focus on who you are at this moment and what you will say to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. So this morning, I do find myself standing here. I do remember that it was a while back when we launched Puna and we promised that we would have guest preachers to come and teach about what it means to give unto the Lord. The difference between tithing and pledged giving. What does that entail? Yes, we did send out invitations, but we found that, you know, clergy are busy. And one of the clergy persons that was supposed to come today uh, gracefully apologized. And then I found myself standing here today. And I said, Glory to God. Amen. I'm a soldier in the Lord, in the house of the Lord. I have to be ready for anything. So here I am. Um, we are continuing with our theme of Into the Harvest and having to plant the seeds of faith. And how does that look like in our lives? Now, if I'm going back to previous Sundays and the things that we shared, I think I've spoken about hitting the call. This was Wednesday, if you attend uh, the Wednesday service, I spoke about how do we hit the call of God. And then last week, I spoke about the heritage we have in Christ. And I remember things that I say, don't worry, so I get to repeat, you know, so that I journey with you and we journey together. Because I always believe that I'm not just only a preacher, but I'm also a teacher. Uh, there are things that I believe that God wants to teach us when we are standing here. He first teaches me so that I can come and teach you as well. It first touches my heart and I believe that when it touches my heart, it touches your heart as well. So, we spoke about last week our heritage in Christ. And this week, I want us to spend some time to talk about when we are pressed down, shaken together, but running over. Because I want to believe that every time we come here, if you have not experienced the overflow of God's love and mercy in your life, ah, oh, I need you to ask Him to just give you that glimpse of an overflow. What does it mean to walk in the overflow of God's mercy, grace, and love in your life? Because when we begin to walk in that overflow, God begins to touch each and every aspect of our lives. Whether it is our children, whether it's our marriage, whether it's our finances, God begins to tap into those uh, aspects of our lives. And He gets to show us that He is still faithful and He is God. So that's what I want us to focus on today. But I want us to do a little bit of a recap of what we said last week. So that you, those that were not here last week, and then you didn't have an opportunity um, to watch you know, the, the service last week, don't worry. You know, let me give you uh, just a brief, uh, just a, a brief you know, recap of what we said last week. So last week, we spoke about the, the, the heritage in Christ. And what does this mean of this heritage? It is a heritage of faith, it is a heritage of grace, and it is a heritage that allows us to have purpose in the lives that God has given us. And where we are reminded about our identity, and how our identity is grind, grounded in the unshakable promises of God, um, what does that look like? And that we carry within ourselves, because we are the vessels of the Most High. Our bodies are a temple of God, isn't it? 
So what is it that we carry inside of ourselves? We carry within us a spiritual inheritance, a legacy of divine provision. Not only provision, but a legacy of power and purpose. Um, but today, I want us to build on that, um, build on that foundation with a message that connects uh, to the very heartbeat of heaven. When I discovered this, oh, my life changed. I'm hoping that yours will change as well. You know, um, the heartbeat of heaven, the principle of being pressed down, shaken together, and running over, because I believe it's a principle. Jesus wouldn't teach it if he didn't want us to follow it. Remember when we started with the planting of seeds of faith into the harvest, uh, I'm hoping that, <laughs> I, I always say I'm hoping, and I'm hoping because um, I'm hoping you have a pen and a paper, um, you will have nuggets that you will write down because when we are here, God says things, you know, um, but if you have a good memory, you know, we, we have good memories these days, there are things that God will just say, oh, you know what? On Sunday, this is what God said. Not what we really said, but this is what God said. You know, and when you see it play over in your life, and then you get to go back and remember that God said this to me on Sunday, and now I'm seeing it playing over. So I want us to go over Luke uh, chapter six, uh, those verses. They're short verses, but they are punch. You know, Jesus' teachings are always cut to the core. Um, I remember. The word is like a double-edged sword. When it comes, it comes and it just shocks us, you know. He, he's always shocking us somehow. But um, in Luke 6, he speaks of the abundant overflow that comes when we follow his ways. And he says, when we give, when we forgive. Those are the, the things that I want you to want in mind. When we give, when we forgive, and when we walk in the unyielding generosity of God. What we release to him, he multiplies. So today we'll be talking about how the law of harvest and the incredible principle of overflow that God promises when we hit his call. How does that look like? That principle of overflow. So, Jesus says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. Now, depending on the versions of the Bible that you read, it could be Amplified, Good News, NIV, NLT, but it basically says the same thing. Now, for me, the scripture is not just about money, but it is about how we give our hearts, our forgiveness, our love, and our service. He's teaching us that whatever we release to God, because remember as Christians, there's something that we release to God. He releases something to us, and then we release something to Him. So, He's teaching us that whatever we release to God in faith will be turned to us, multiplied. This is the word of the Lord. If you go over the Bible, there's always multiplication. So I, 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 I get to, you know, um, worry when there is no multiplication in things that we do. Because wherever God is, there will always be multiplication. So, he's teaching us that whatever we release to God in faith will be returned to us, multiplied. This is not a gospel of prosperity. In unexpected and unabundant ways. See, the principle of press down, shaken together, and running over is a kingdom principle that reveals how God multiplies the measure we use when we give with a pure heart. I'm going to break it down further. So, what does it mean giving with a pure heart? This principle of press down, shaken together, and running over, it is a principle rooted in God's generosity. It is about the attitude which 
with which we give. With which we give our time, with which we give our love, which with which we give our forgiveness, and even our material resources. The measure you use to give is a measure that will be returned to you. Now, don't fight me. I'm not saying this. The Bible is saying this. Okay? So you go and read your Bible. I'm not saying that. But the word of the Lord is saying. Okay? Don't go out and say, hey, who is that? I didn't say it. Let's read it. The measure you used to give is a measure that will be returned to you. Multiply. So, it's not just about quantity, but quality. Giving from a place of faith and love, rather than duty and obligation. You give it from a place of understanding who God is in your life. It's not a duty for you to give to God. It's not an obligation for you to give to God. But it is because of what he has done in your life. So, when you are pressed down, what does that look like? Imagine filling up a basket with grain of flour. Now, I wanted to have the basket with flour, but I didn't want to fight with Mama Nisrina and Lena tomorrow, okay? Because there will be flour everywhere, yeah, okay? So, I wanted you to see it so that you don't just imagine it, but you see it. When you're filling a basket with grain or flour to make room for more and you press it down, you know, so that you can make room for more. You would press it down so it could hold even more. This imagery shows that God doesn't just return your giving as it is. He presses it down. Just like when you're pouring the flour and you shake the bucket, the basket, you know when you shake it, because you want room for more. You know, I can put more in this, you know, and more in this, and more in this, and you shake it. This is exactly how God measures it when He gives it to you. He shakes it and presses it down so that there's more. There's more He can release. There's more He can release. So, make room for more blessings. This means that when you give generously, God shows that you receive back with extra capacity. Whether it's in peace, joy, provision, or opportunities, He gives more. And this symbolizes a blessing that is compacted to its fullest, you know, potential. So when He shakes it down, you know, the shaking together, what does that entail? That I said, shaking the basket removes any gaps allowing even more space for blessings to be poured in. This represents God refining and maximizing what you receive in return for your giving. So when God blesses you, He doesn't leave any gaps. I get to that. He doesn't leave any gaps or spaces. He ensures that His provision fills every area of your life. Every area. <coughs> Whether it is within your marriage, it is with your children, it is work, He fills every gap because His eyes are never taken away from us. He knows what we need. So He fills every area. He shakes out the access so you just so you're not just blessed in one area by many. Whether it is emotional, spiritual, or material. And I'm testament to that. I always say I'm testament to God's gracious love. So the running over, when he presses this down, this blessing down, and shakes it so that you see it, there's always a running over. There's always an overflow. We're going to come to that scripture of Luke. The image of the blessing running over speaks to overflow. A, a stage where God's provision exceeds your capacity to contain it. Have you ever experienced God bless you in a way that you say, oh, I know the 
this is too much now. Stop it, man. No, you are just doing too much for me. Have you ever experienced that? That grace of God just blessing you. You know, get out of and you're like, ah, I thought this was a blessing. But then he just tops it and he says, ooh, ooh, you think this is enough. And then he just tops it. If you haven't experienced that, I want, I want you to experience that. Because that is real. That is alive. That happens. When you experience that overflow of God's love in your life. And when you take from your pantry, and God just keeps on filling your pantry, filling your pantry. And you're thinking, where does this food come from? And it is because of God's gracious love in your life. Not because you're just working hard, because you are understanding the principle of when God presses down and shakes it, there's an overflow in our lives. So there's an access that we get to have. It reflects also God's abundant nature, where He blesses you beyond what you gave. Because that's how He is. Sometimes we think we're giving a little to the Lord, but He just gives us so much. Because you know what? We've been consistent to what we actually committed to Him. And when we're consistent in what we committed to Him, and He says, you know what? Hey, ah, then has been. Ah, the Spirit. But let me show you that I am just a gracious God. And that's what it does. So it reflects that nature of the Lord. The overflow then is not just for you, but it will be for everyone around you. It will spill into the lives of others, making you a blessing. So our lives as Christians are lives where we live in this abundance of God. Not just for ourselves, but so we can be generous and impactful in the lives of others. And that's what we have. So that we can be generous and impactful in the lives of others. It doesn't become about us anymore, but it becomes about the purpose and the intent and the will of God in our lives. So, what is God's response to this measure that we give to Him? Because the measure that you give will be given unto you, isn't it? So, the, the key takeaway here yeah, from this principle is that God responds to the measure we use. If we are generous, God will be generous with us. With us. Understand? Understand that English? You will be generous with us. Not to us, with us. You will be generous with us. If we forgive, we will be forgiven abundantly. If we show mercy, we will receive mercy in return. That's why we sing the Lord's Prayer, say Lord's Prayer. This isn't a transaction. It's not a transaction between you and God. But it is a reflection of God's heart on generosity. Because God is a generous God, isn't it? So it's a reflection of that. That principle shows a reflection of God's generosity. The more open-handed, open-handed, and open-hearted we are, the more room we make for God to fill our lives with His blessings. The more open-handed, if you want to receive from God, I've, I've watched people when they pray to the Lord and say, Father, we, we, we come before you and we would like you to give. And they're holding their hands like this and I'm like, hey, you need to be in a position of receiving. So your hands have to be open. So that whatever he pours, you know, he pours abundantly. So that's why when I pray, I open my hands. Because it's the attitude that comes with it. That Lord, I'm in a position where I can receive what I'm praying for. I don't fold my hands. I open them so that God says, I'm going to give unto you. So when we are open-handed and open-hearted, the more we create more room for God to fill our lives with blessings. Now, this is not limited to my mind. 
We're not talking about that. It is important that we understand the principle is not limited to just financial giving. It applies to every area of our life. Whether you're giving kindness, forgiveness, love, or serving others, when you extend grace, you receive grace. When you release forgiveness, you experience the healing and freedom that comes with it. If you're a person that normalizes forgiving others, oh, you just have an easy life. Because you're not going to carry any grudges against anybody. If somebody does something to you and you just live it like that, you're like, you know, you know I just forgive you and you move on. Who's helped in that situation? You are. Because you become lighter. And you don't have to carry anything. And the lighter you are, the more praise you get to give to God. Have you never experienced that? The lighter you are in your Christian world and not carrying burdens, the more praises you give unto God. It's that principle. And not holding grudges. So it's that giving as well. When you give of your forgiveness, because God gives you forgiveness. So the principle extends to relationships, time, resources, and even spiritual growth. So why is this principle powerful? The principle of press down, shaking together, and I know that, reveals the heart of God's economy. An economy based on faith. Because God doesn't operate in Chapula, eh? Hey, hey. It's in faith. That's the economy of the kingdom of God. Your faith. It's based on faith, love, and generosity. And it teaches us that, number one, generosity leads to abundance. Number two, God multiplies what you offer. You may think you're giving small, but God sees your heart and multiplies it. The giving is in the heart. It is in your heart. When God sees that, your heart is sincere. The sincerity of your heart. That's why he says, I love a cheerful giver. Because when we come to him, imagine when you are giving something to the Lord, and then you come and you're like, yo, I shouldn't have given that to you. Hey, man, you go home now, and you beat yourself up. What are you doing? You're taking away your blessings again. Because you were blessed. You were blessed for that. So when you give it, you forget about it. Because you're plunging into God and saying that, I know that your grace is sufficient for me. And whatever I need, you will be able to provide. So, it multiplies. And then, the author is not just for you. But it is for everyone that comes alongside of you. Whether it is your family. And that's why sometimes I always say to people, as African people, this person that came with black tax, <laughs> that, that doesn't exist in an African country. Because when God blesses you in your family, he blesses you so that you can be able to open doors for others in the family that are struggling. Western culture, they understood that. That when they put in a position, when they know that God has given them and blessed them, it is not just only for them, but it blesses everybody that is around them. It even blesses the community that they live. And that is why you will see that they will, it is easy for them to open their pockets and give. Because they understand the principle that comes with giving. And God giving it in hundred folds. So whoever says black tax, and I always say that, that there's no such thing in an African culture. If my cousin is struggling, and I see him struggling right in front of me, and have the means to help him, I will. It's not black tax. Is what God has given me the capacity to help another person. Yes, you can set boundaries that they don't 
don't take advantage, but it certainly takes it. It's you given the capacity to help others in need. And as a Christian, you are supposed to be doing that. And in that, then the overflow that is in you, what does it do? It overflows to others. And imagine when you're seeing somebody that you help, that their lives are flourishing. And in the back of your mind, the Holy Spirit reminds you, you had to plant the seed of the investment for them. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not boasting about those things. But when you see them flourish right in front of you, and God reminds you that, hey, I planted a seed for her business to be like that. And God's blessing now comes upon you as well. Because blessings are like that. They just huh, flow. But we have to understand the principle. So we need to teach it to us, to ourselves, and understand. Living by faith also unlocks the miracles it needs to be in our lives. So when we press down, shaking, running over, that's what we need to see. When we are trusting God with our giving, where there is our resources, our time, or forgiveness, we unlock the supernatural multiplication that happens. It is a divine relation. We cannot be in control of that. In that space, in that time, God is in charge. And as I said, I'm a testament to that. In a day's time, I'm going to Kenya. Now let me tell you, someone doesn't have money that's sitting in the bank. I'm running an organization that doesn't have money sitting in the bank. It should. Because Christians are gracious, loving, and giving, but there's no giving. But can I tell you what God has done? God has raised up an army of people that when I tap into them, they don't ask me, it's a short time for you. They just tell me how much we're going to plant the seed. I didn't have it. But the moment I said, it's urgent, this is what's going on, they said, how much is needed? Because it is a lot when it comes to mission, it's not just activities, but when you get there, that community is in need. How can you help that community? There are things you need to bring them out. And then when you call them and they just say, how much? What do you need to be transported? What do you need for this to happen? And these are Christians, but they don't make anything. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? They're not Anglican. They're not Anglican. They've never been Anglicans in their lives. But they understand the principle of giving to open the doors for their businesses to continue to flourish and be flourishing. They're giving. The principle of press down, shake it together, running over. So, Luke 6, verse 37, when Jesus teaches that if we forgive others, we will also be forgiven in abundance. It means that when we're forgiven, we're releasing bitterness, releasing any offense, so that we can make room for God's grace and healing to overflow in our lives. Acts 20, verse 35. Paul says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Meaning when we serve others selflessly, selflessly, we often find that God blesses us with opportunities. He blesses us with joy and favor. When you say, I have found favor in the Lord, how does favor in the Lord us? We preach about Esther finding favor with the king, isn't it? But have you found favor in God? You see, sometimes when I come to people and I'm saying I'm highly favored, I'm blessed, I'm wonderfully made, and I'm made in the image of God. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Because it comes with the favor of the Lord and how it looks like. Not because I'm a priest. It started when I was a young girl. Not even knowing that I would be a priest. But finding favor in the Lord and how it looks like. 
that it was shown to me by my grandfather oh! and my grandmother. So grandparents have a lot to do. Parents are busy. My mom was very busy. The person that instilled the values and the moral ethics of being a Christian are my grandparents. Understanding from a young child when you find favor in life, what it looks like. So, in Leviticus, it talks about tithing and our offerings. God's people were commanded to give a tenth of their produce, the resources to Him. In this act of faith and obedience, it was a reminder that everything belongs to God. God was not saying, I'm stripping you off 10%. No, 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 no. He was saying, I'm taking 10% because I know that 10% is enough for you to do whatever it is that you need to do. So it was a reminder that everything belongs to me, but I only want 10%. And through tithing, the people acknowledged that God was their provider. And in return, God promises to bless them in ways that go beyond he promised them. And God does not go back from his promises. He doesn't. Whatever he promises comes to pass. Because it is his promises. He doesn't go back to his word. He's not like us. When you promise somebody that you're going to do this, and then you turn around and you're like, oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do this. I thought about it, and now I can't. That's not God. So the principle is about living in the fullness of God's abundance and grace. When we give, whether it's love, our time, our resources, God gets to multiply beyond our capacity. The more we trust Him and live generously, the more we will experience this overflow of his provision so that we begin to live in the overflow. In Acts 20, Paul shows the heart of a seven leader. Because everything Paul did, it brought a supernatural blessing upon his life. He gave everything. Paul gave his time, his praise. He gave everything to God. And in return, God gave him divine strength, wisdom, and favor to do what? To advance the kingdom of God. And that is true. There's no man that advanced the kingdom of God like Paul. He advanced it. He made it what it is today. And God gave him that through his giving. So the overflow of a righteous person as one who is generous, who reads our mind of compassionate and just, it says that their hearts will be steadfast, trusting the Lord. And what are the results of being steadfast? When you're steadfast, it means being cons consistent. Being steadfast. You will never be shaken. That's what someone told promises us. You will never be shaken. You will be remembered forever. Your legacy will be one of abundance. It says their horn will be lifted high in honor. So as a church, this is the life we are called to live. A life of righteousness that overflows. It's a life where our faithfulness, obedience, and generosity cause us to live lusting and bad. But we have to activate our faith. One time, I think, during the time of the pandemic, there was a song, Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. I don't know if you've heard it. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. When we are active in our faith, is that not an act, we will experience the abundance of the grace of the Lord. Because God wants us to take what He has placed inside of us to multiply beyond 
are one of the streams. Now, if you have experienced this revelation of God in your life, maybe once in your life, I have a challenge for you, because I have to challenge you. The challenge for you today is, are you ready for an overflow? Because if you're ready for an overflow, it means you have to step out of it and step into trusting in the Lord for you. And another challenge that I have is, if you were coming here, there's a poster that's outside that says, James of Giving. And during this time, we want to share the story. If God has given a revelation in your life of what it means to give to God consistently, and you saw God work in your life. Now don't write me a whole book. <laughs> write me a paragraph. Write me a page of how you saw God revealing Himself in your life through your giving and how He's been consistent. And we want to compile that, make it a budget for Buna. We want you to reminisce of the time when God was so gracious to you. And you know what stories have a tendency of doing? Stories have a tendency of inspiring others. Inspiring others to see that it doesn't only happen in the charismatic churches, but it also happens to us because we are also children of God. And so that when we read our stories, our stories, together, we know that God is at work. And God continues to hear us. God continues to walk in our midst as a people of God and as a family of Christ Church. So you write that story, send it on WhatsApp, there's a poster outside, the church WhatsApp, or you can email it, office of the and say, Tell us your story. Because you want to share your story. Because your story is important. Because you are part of this journey. You are part of the body of Christ. One story that you saw God working miracles in your life. So that when the other person says, How? How do you mean that God did this for this person? Because we hide those stories, isn't it? You can actually say anonymous. Do you understand me? You can say anonymous. You don't need to publish your name. You can say anonymous if you don't want to be done. And we'll compile it on the 17th. The book will be released. And my mother right now is probably, but she, she gets the juices going when it comes to creativity. Yeah. She's probably thinking how we're going to do it so that it doesn't cost us. You know, our treasure. She probably knows already what she needs to do so that it doesn't cost us when it comes to print. So may the Lord bless you abundantly as you continue your journey of faith, continuing the story of your faith.
and we are so grateful that even this morning our God is speaking directly to us. Now faith is confident in what we hope for in assurance about what we do not see. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, for your perfect word and your perfect will this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you spoke and it spoke directly into our hearts. We receive this word, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of the faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. We thank you for the thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly at this moment. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, and we ask you, Lord, this morning to increase our faith. Lord Jesus, because faith becomes the key to unlock the things that are sitting in the unseen world. Father, we are in the season of all our thanksgiving. Lord, I just want to believe it's those people and those families who feel that perhaps they have nothing to celebrate, yet again we stay. <coughs> Lord, I want to lift those families reminded of the story in the book of Samuel where we are taught about her, Lord Jesus, who kept on going to Shiloh when she had nothing to be grateful. But the fact that you are God in her life, she kept on going because she believed her gift was going to be granted, her wish was going to be granted. Father, we bring before you the families, the mothers, the fathers, the children, the siblings, that even though they may lack material, but they don't let the zeal to keep your spiritual people serving you as the only God. We thank you for the transition which our country has seen from the time we had elections. There were a lot of uncertainties, Lord. But here we are. We are still in peace as a country. We are in peace as a country. Because you had mercy on us, you heard our prayers and our cry for mercy. Even this morning we cry, Lord Jesus, for the bereaved families. We cry for the bereaved families, Lord Jesus, to say, have mercy upon them. Let them not take this opportunity. Let them look at this time as the time to draw even closer to you. Let them not allow the pain of losing their loved one to separate them. As Apostle Paul says, let nothing separate us from the love of God. We pray for the sick in our congregation. Some have been so sick for so long that they have not been able to come to church. Father, we, we leave them to you this morning. We leave them to you this morning because you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. And with the stripes that Jesus, the stripes of Jesus, they are healed. Father, we are looking unto Jesus, only unto Jesus. We are fixing our eyes only unto Jesus for their healing. And we know we will not be disappointed. Father, as we leave 
the house today. Help us to meditate on all that is pure, all that is true, all that is noble, and whatever is right. Let us not meditate on our problems. Lord, we know we are guilty. We have meditated more on what we see before us. We have not meditated on your word. We have not meditated on what is pure, what is true, what is noble, and what is right. But Father, we ask that you help us to channel our hearts and minds to what is pure, what is true, what is noble. And whatever it is, in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen.
And the Lord be with you. And also with you. The Lord, sorry, the Lord is here. He is here to us. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. And let us give them to the Lord of Lords. It is time to give thanks and praise. Now we have a new one. 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 We have a new one.
God is good. And all the time. God is good. We have quite a few notices this morning, so I'm just going to try and run through them. But they are also part of the pulifilet, so you will pick up some of the things in the pulifilet as distributed on the WhatsApp group. Today is the 29th of September. Um, we are having our our course, uh, prayer course, the prayer course. It's starting today at 4 p.m. Um, please join in and hear what the Lord is teaching us about prayers. Um, the poster is also outside there just to give you a bit of what will be happening. I think the lesson is about eight lessons on the on the on, on this one, the first session. And it will be starting every Sunday from now for the eight lessons. Um, and then our team is going for the summer mission um, from the first to the tenth of October. Uh, so we request that you put here in your prayers every day because there are certain areas which are not very safe uh, where they are coming. So we know, um, <coughs> but we know that the Lord will protect them and keep them safe. But it is your prayers that will do this night for you. And the baptism classes will resume on Saturday. I think it is the 5th of October. Yes, Saturday, the 5th of October, I think the meeting is taken, and it's the 6th of October on the pavement, but it should be uh, 5. And um, AWF on the 13th of October. AWF, I just want to get this, the proper the proper way um, yeah, yeah. of the event that is happening on the 13th of October. And maybe once I'm trying to find that, let me go to... We, we want to also take this time to thank you for the donation, the tea donation. Uh, through those donations that you are making during the week, on Sundays, uh, we will be able to have our tea ongoing, and it is not being funded from the church funds. So it is giving a lot of relief in terms of allowing us to uh, to be able to use uh, the money for other things. Right now, let me go back to the Anglican Women's Fellowship (AWF). They are hosting the on the 13th of October, which will be on a Sunday. After the church service, they are hosting the the they are hosting the 70 years and above. So it's an elderly day for the 70 years and above. Uh, so it will be a collaborate. It will be a collaboration as we collaborated so perfectly during Father's Day. Let's join hands again as guilds and uh, honor our elders. Um, Jenny Pitores, our Ma Bishop, will be giving a short talk on the day, and uh, the guild contribution per guild is two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, there are plenty fun activities, including simple quiz, storytelling session where the elderly can share their cherished memories or wisdom, light music or sing-along sessions will also uplift their spirit. So if you need to know um, if there's anything that you need to inquire further, you can contact our Sahab, uh, who is the AWF uh, leader. I just wanted to get that one correct. 
We are continuing with the recycling, uh, with recycling. So please do bring those uh, bottles and, and cans. Uh, collect them every week and bring them over. Uh, when they make a nice um, load, they, are, they make some money for, for the church. So please uh, do that. And then we are gearing up for Bruno on the 17th of November. 17th of November. I'm just highlighting 17th of November because we've always been having Bruno at the end, the last Sunday of November. But we have shifted it up uh, on the to the same of November due to other commitments with the usual date. Um, today we are being served tea by the Sishewa Imajwa Park. Uh, next week Sunday we will be served by CBD. Uh, in the following it will be Penina Park, Ivy Park, Western Bank and Rainbow Park. So the 6th of October, which is next week, is CBD. Okay. Um, the dean has spoken to it already, the journey to giving. There's a poster outside, uh, but if maybe you are not used to the notice board, reading from the notice board, you can just ask me, I will explain for you. Yeah, I think uh, that is about it from the wedding's desk this weekend. Thank you. God is good. All the time. And all the time. All the time. And God remains awesome throughout the days of our life. Amen. Amen. Just to share a bit, we were at the provincial cinema. Remember, the provincial cinema is a big body of the church. Of our southern Africa. And we really enjoyed being part of that body. And as you might have seen on the news and on the newspapers, as the DBA is after us at the moment, <laughs> again the church still says it's not ready to bless the same sex union. So something that we need to keep it in prayer as the church daily continues to grow. Amen. And also just to share a bit about the day. The day should go on SOMA. SOMA stands for sharing of ministries abroad. This is one of the ministries that our former Bishop Martin used to love most. As you recall that our church, the American church, is a missional church where it does not keep its roots in one place, rather it goes abroad sharing the word of God, planting the seeds of God so that we can grow. So our team will be going there for 10 days. For the, for the 10 days, the church will be with the team. <laughs> so good and I will be playing around. <laughs> so let's just, I want to call the team to come in front, and then I'll have to call for the manager to grow. And everyone in the church, just, just for us to stretch our hands as we, as we pray for, for the team, for God to watch over our heads, for God to give, it, to give them wisdom and lots of knowledge as she, as she goes to plant that seed of life. Who knows? Where, maybe where she's going, Lord, with us will rise again. So let us charge it to God. And I request again that. As we walk out, uh, then that get the collision basket. As we walk out, we'll play the collision basket by the door. Because we can't send the team abroad in Kenya without seeing snow. She needs seeds, we don't know if there's meat in the top. She might also need to talk to the way. So I'll play the collision basket at the back. And as we go walk out after the service, if we are led by the Spirit, we can freely give some. So that the dean can be able to buy what she needs to buy as she goes to drugs. So after that, we all stand and stretch our hands and move to the
they wouldn't get there. Tell them about us. Thank you. And we again thank you for our support. And I just want to I want a small part of the song. There's a part which says there is no God like Jehovah. Yeah? Yeah. And people say there is no one like Jehovah. Here we are talking about God's if ever. There is no God like Jehovah. Oh,
otra vez.